Welcome to Fireside Jets. My name is Alex, my co host here, Ryan Moran. And today we're taking a look at the Jets' secondary new free agent acquisition, Jordan White. Had some really great things to say about this new group of guys with Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, some really foundational pieces being built for that Jets secondary. And I think they could be a pretty damn good unit um, if they do come together. A lot of veteran experience, some young guys on the roster, and some familiarity, especially with a great coaching staff, Robert Sala. Um, he is a guy that, you know, we have a lot of trust in to really curate a good pass rush and have a good lockdown secondary. I expect to see some good hybrid formations and these guys taking their game to the next level. But before we dive into Jordan Whitehead, what he had to say about this new secondary and how excited he is to join this team, how are you doing today, my friend? All righty, Alex. All is good. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, excited about Jordan Whitehead, DJ Reed, some of the names you touched up on there, obviously Sauce in the draft. And, you know, just the identity that these guys are going to bring to the secondary as much as anything. You know, it's one of the first things I thought about when Jordan Whitehead was signed, you know, watching him really these last two years pretty closely with the Bucks and just the physical nature that he plays within the box. You know, he's uh, someone who can make plays around the line of scrimmage in the backfield, can pressure the quarterback. And I think in zone coverage offers some, you know, good uh, ability as well to just read and react, you know, use his – uh, aggressive playing style, you know, over the middle against guys to make his presence felt. And you look at some of the, the games the Jets had defensively last year. I mean, they didn't really have much of an attitude. They really had a lot of games, especially against the run, where they were giving up 150, 200 yards plus. And I think, you know, with Whitehead, that's a guy who's not going to allow that to happen. You know, he's going to change kind of the identity of the defense. And, you know, I was excited to really hear him speak the other day on just his excitement. You know, obviously – coming in with DJ and sauce and, you know, some of the other pieces, obviously he was with Jason Pinnock at Pitt, which he touched up on. So there's a lot of excitement in the secondary is certainly improved. Yeah. I mean, looking at, uh, looking at him specifically, his statistics, what he did and accomplished last season, he had a pretty damn good year. He's a good coverage uh, safety, but he can also play in the box, right? <clears throat> his alignment snap counts ranged from this last year, specifically 334 snaps in the box, 265 at free safety and 191 in the slot and 42 as a de facto cornerback. So he's capable of playing in the box and at free safety. Um, he's kind of played a little bit less free safety last year since Winfield kind of taking on that, that free safety role for Tampa Bay. Uh, but I do really think uh, he could make an impact in multiple ways for this Jets team, especially, you know, Marcus may he's gone now, right? Marcus may. Okay. So yes. Marcus may is gone. Um, now you need to have that replacement. Jordan Whitehead can do it all, right? He can play the deep safety role. He can play um, in the box. And they, he kind of mentioned how Tampa Bay would take him out on third downs, and he really didn't like that. He thought he deserved to be on the field. He can he can make uh, good tackles. You know, he's not a, a bad tackler whatsoever. Um, he had a 15.5% missed tackle rate last year. He did make 41 stops in 57 uh, on 57 targets, he gave up 39 receptions, 68.4% reception rate. But um, altogether, he only gave up two touchdowns. Um, he had two interceptions to boot. So, you know, looking at him, you know, he really succeeded after week six. He gave up those two touchdowns in the first five games of the season. And then he was lights out the rest of the way. He did not give up a lot of yardage. Um, his worst game down the stretch which was, against, was against Philadelphia in the wild card. He gave up 35 yards, but that's nothing uh, like that crazy at all. So, you know, when I'm looking at him, he's going to be the Jets primary playmaker in that defensive backfield. And he has some pretty good things to say um, about the Jets specifically and this group. So I'll, I'll give you some quotes about what what he um, how he feels about, you know, joining the Jets and what he thinks about the secondary. So we started off by saying uh, I'm a team player. It was frustrating to come out on third downs last year. Sometimes, as I mentioned before, I felt like I was making enough plays and being a leader on the team. I felt I should be in the game. I was not going to handle it during the season, handle it after season. Uh, definitely, I was frustrated. Everyone uh, would be if you felt like you're not being used right. So the Jets clearly have a different plan for him. I think he likes what they plan to do um, since, you know, maybe he's going to be a three down safety. He'll be in the box. He'll, trend, you know, move back to free safety. He'll do some really unique things for this Jets defense. Um, Whitehead went on to say, uh, let's see here. So he said, I remember when I was at Pitt, specifically when he was playing with Jason Pinnock, who's also the other safety for this Jets team. I remember when I was at Pitt, I was a junior and he was like my little bro. I always had uh, ball skills, and, he, and him being at safety now gives him a chance to play free, roam around. He has a lot of range. As he gets smarter and more comfortable, he will be great. Um, so interestingly, like I kind of get the sense from what he just said there that if he has that rangey safety quality in Pinnock, I wonder if Pinnock ends up starting at free safety and Jordan Whitehead kind of starts in the box, or maybe they just kind of like flip-flop based on um, you know how exactly uh, Robert Sala wants this defense to, to run. Maybe they'll probably be on the field simultaneously most times. Uh, but how do you see Jordan Whitehead and Pinnock actually splitting reps and at what positions? 
I think what you just said there is correct. I think Jordan Whitehead is primarily come to the Jets to play a strong safety to make his presence felt where he's best around the line of scrimmage in the box, you know, using the ability that he's got to wrap guys up. You know, his pursuit angles, I think, probably the one area, you know, just in terms of that tackling rate that you talked about, you know, which is to be expected. I mean, when you have a guy who does play with his hair on fire, like he does, you know, at times you may over, over pursue, be a little aggressive, you know, with your pursuit. But I think overall, you're going to see him really, like you said, even, even those slot alignments, like it goes to show you he can play in zone coverage underneath and cover three. So I think he offers you some of that. And then with Pinnock, I mean, the size, the athletic ability, you know, obviously he's got some coverage background, you know, the range is obviously there. He's got, you know, some speed and can cover some range, you know, just with this long stride. So I think that's really what you're going to see. If, if Pinnock ends up, you know, being that second safety opposite Whitehead, it'll be at the free position. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, <clears throat> when you're looking at this defense specifically in the secondary, you have some really great new pieces. Um, Whitehead, Sauce, and DJ Reed, there's, they're all new players. This is a totally revamped secondary. And Jordan Whitehead was really excited about it, specifically he said, I think this can be one of the best secondaries I've been a part of in five years. And these guys are hungry. So he's coming from Tampa Bay. They've had some d pretty damn good secondaries um, with Jamel Dean. Of course, they had Richard Sherman for a little while. Um, who else do they have? They have some really great players. I'm um, Winfield Carlton obviously Davis. drafted Carlton Antoine Davis. Winfield. They have and Antoine Winfield. Yeah, so they have some good Antoine players, Winfield. right? Like, I mean, they won a Super Bowl for goodness sake. Like, there is definitely <laughs> some some good players on that team. And Whitehead saying that this could be the best group is very exciting. He did go on to say this group is very smart, a lot of hard workers. I don't see a difference between this group and the last team I was on and the group of guys I play with, Richard Sherman, all those guys. We got it here. We got everything we need, the ability, the toughness, and the smartness to play this game. So there's no doubt uh, we should be the best group. And I think, um, you know, when it comes to how they're going to, you know, utilize these guys, we've had this conversation a couple times already with Sauce kind of being, we think will be the, the CB1, and then uh, DJ Reed will be that CB2, you know, coming over from Seattle. Uh, DJ, Reed is, DJ Reed is an interesting player. Like, I want to look into him a little bit more into statistics. Um, let's take a look here. So last year with Cincinnati, gave up um, 100 and well, 383 total yards and two touchdowns. So not that bad. He had some really great coverage games, specifically at the end of the season against Detroit and Arizona, where he gave up 34 yards and then two yards um, over 77 snaps in week 18 against Arizona. So he's had some pretty locked down performances against Jacksonville in week eight. He gave up only seven yards, eight yards against New Orleans, eight yards against San Francisco. His worst games really came to open the year when he was kind of getting his feet wet. He gave up two touchdowns against Minnesota, but then he didn't give up a single touchdown the rest of the way. He's traditionally a pretty damn good coverage corner. So I think that he's going to, you know, really make an impact on this team. Um, he does have a little bit of some experience in the slot, but he's primarily a boundary guy. Of course, Sauce coming in here, lan like lanky, rangy, fast cornerback who's very aggressive. He bleeds confidence. Um, these guys have the right mentality and mindset to be tremendous corners and, and safeties in the NFL. And this Jets team, three new high end players. And you have a pass rush. I mean, goodness gracious, like this defense could be absolutely phenomenal next year. And if Zach Wilson takes that step forward, there's honestly, if all cylinders start to click and they're all work, they're all, you know, playing at a high level and everyone's consistent, you guys can make the, you guys could be a wild card team. Like seriously, I kind of think that that's possible this year. You could be a wild card team. If everybody is clicking, if there's inconsistencies, if there's some hiccups, which I'm, I imagine there will be. You know, you may just miss the wild card, but I think that there's there's a legitimate chance you could sneak in there um, if everybody's playing at a good level. And I think it really ultimately boils down to Zach Wilson um, and how he performs. But this secondary, that defense, if they're if they're keeping opposing offenses off the field and they're and they're three and outs a lot, you know, forcing punts, you're gonna see some more production out of Zach Wilson. Ultimately, he just needs more reps and experience. Um, so, how do you think this this secondary is gonna pair with the pass rush? Like, how how good do you think this defense can really be? I definitely think, you know, they were bottom five last year. I think they can break into the top 20. I think I said it yesterday on our show. And, you know, it's very hard to make a jump into like the top 12, top 10. I feel like that's probably a bit unrealistic at this time. I think these guys do got to gel, but the talent is much better. I think that, you know, the Russian coverage can work hand in hand. You know, you're talking about a front four with Carl Lawson and Jermaine Johnson on the edge and Quentin Williams and John Franklin Myers inside. You, you can really feel good about that front four. You know, you said it with Sauce and DJ Reed, you know, it's two outside corners with Michael Carter in the slot, you know, Jordan Whitehead, CJ Mosley, some of those other guys. I think that, you know, this defense should be, you know, in that 20 to 15 range, you know, by the end of the season. You know, just a couple of other things like you said with Sauce, just and this is the first thing I thought about with Whitehead as well, just the mindset. Like, 
the Jets had too many awful games defensively last year where it was like there was no attitude. There was just no will to want to stop it. And I think both of those guys really bring that. You know, another thing with DJ Reed that I love that really flies under the radar, obviously, is familiarity with Salah. You know, played in a very similar type of scheme with the Seahawks last year to what the Jets are running. So that's obviously, you know, a pretty easy transition for him to make. But his run defense quietly is another really underrated aspect to his game. You know, when you look at the numbers from last year. So, you know, the, obviously the nose tackle and linebacker position are unknowns right now, you know, in terms of the run defense for the Jets, really outside of like C.J. Mosley and Quentin Williams. But I think, you know, some of these guys like Sauce, like Reed, like Whitehead, Jermaine Johnson, you know, will uh, give this run defense a little bit more of a boost. And the final thing with Whitehead, I mean, there were times last year where guys like even Rondé Barber were saying, I mean, he was like the best player on their defense. You know, just his ability to make plays in the backfield, going from sideline to sideline. He can pressure the quarterback, obviously, and he's still only 25 years old. So hopefully a young player who's really just coming into the zone here with the Jets and, you know, him, DJ Reed, Sauce, Michael Carter, the second, Pinnock, you know, these guys can be the future of the secondary for the Jets. Absolutely. I mean, I'm excited to see how these guys mesh in the chemistry builds. And I'm sure Robert Sala is like just bleeding to get these guys on the field and in live action and see what they can accomplish. A lot of excitement going around uh, one Jets drive. It should be fun to see this season and the development that they take the steps forward they make. And maybe they can sneak into the wild card. Maybe that next year is the year that we talk about them being a legitimate playoff contending team. Um, but nonetheless, a lot of great talent, a lot of great players. It's going to come down to coaching and, and the consistency and good health. Um, so hopefully the MetLife turf doesn't take any ankles because as a Giants fan, the we have so many ankles all over the field. They're just there's ghosts of ankles everywhere. It's just um, embarrassing. That field is a piece of trash. Um, but <laughs> nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Fireside Jets. Take a look at the secondary, what Jordan Whitehead had to say about the secondary and the excitement he has for it. A lot of good news, a lot of good stuff coming out from there. Uh, from the camp. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm sure Ryan is the same. Make sure to like and subscribe below on the YouTube channel. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Jets episode. <laughs>